More than 50 billion tons of sand are wasted every year in the world, making it the second most used resource after water. Sand is an unregulated material widely used in literally every building project on Earth. With the amount of sand that humanity uses in a year, a wall 88 feet wide and high can be built around the Earth. And it would seem that this building material on Earth is inexhaustible. But as it turned out, world construction may soon stop due to the lack of sand. How can we run out of a substance that can be found in virtually every country on Earth and that seems to be virtually limitless? The main driver behind the global sand crisis is the unprecedented growth of cities. The number of people living in urban areas has more than quadrupled since 1950. More than half of the world's people now live in cities according to the UN. And another 2.5 billion will move there in the next three decades, the equivalent of adding eight New York-sized metropolitan areas each year. All this requires a staggering amount of sand. Every apartment building, skyscraper, office tower, and mall that is built anywhere is made of concrete, which is essentially just sand and gravel glued together with cement. Every square meter of asphalt road connecting these buildings is also made of sand, similar to every window in every one of those buildings. All this sand has to come from somewhere. And at once, deserts come to mind the largest terrestrial biome on planet Earth with an area of 21 million square kilometers, excluding the polar deserts of Antarctica and the Arctic. Occupying about 14% of the land surface, there is enough sand for everything. But not everything is so simple. Large and durable concrete buildings cannot be built using desert sand. Desert sand has a very smooth structure while sea, river, and quarry sand, on the contrary, have a rougher, jagged surface as well as edges, which allows the sand to be more securely fixed in cement solutions and simply in compacted layers of base gravel stabilization because sand grains cling to each other. Only such sand is used in the construction of various buildings, bridges, and installations. Buying sand for someone who has a lot of it in the desert at first glance will seem strange, but this is a forced necessity. Saudi Arabia, for example, buys sand from abroad, and 95% of its territory is sandy deserts. In India, the amount of construction sand used annually has tripled since 2000 and continues to rise rapidly. The demand for certain types of construction sand is so great that Dubai, which is located on the edge of a vast desert, imports it from Australia. And China has used more cement in the past few years than the US has used in the entire 20th century. Just last year, the Chinese used enough construction sand to cover the entire state of New York per inch. In Germany, builders use 100 million tons of sand every year, and this figure could easily increase if the market improves. As a result, the global demand for sand has begun to deplete river beds and beaches. Agricultural land and forests are being destroyed to extract these precious gains. And in a growing number of countries, criminal gangs are joining the trade creating an often deadly black market in sand. The competition has become so fierce that in many places, criminal gangs have taken up the trade, digging up megatons of sand to sell on the black market. According to human rights groups, in some parts of Latin America and Africa, children are forced to work as slaves in sand mines. Gangs operate here like all organized crime in the world. They bribe corrupt police and government officials. And when they deem it necessary, they attack and even kill those who stand in their way. In June 2019, Jose Luis Alvarez Flores, an environmental activist from the southern Mexican state of Chiapas, who opposed illegal sand mining in a local river, was shot dead. Two months later in Rajasthan, India, policemen were shot as they tried to stop a column of tractors transporting illegally mined sand. As a result of the ensuing firefight, two miners were killed and two policemen were hospitalized. Violence due to the sand trade has claimed the lives of people in Kenya, the Gambia, and Indonesia in recent years. Delhi Special Court jailed a boss of VV Minerals, the Indian sand mining giant and former Environment Ministry Director, for bribery. A mining baron who denied allegations of illegal sand mining was caught paying university tuition fees for the official's son in exchange for an environmental permit. The sand problem came as a surprise to many, says Pascal Paduzzi, a researcher at the United Nations Environment Program. 
but we can extract 50 billion tons of any material a year without having a serious impact on the planet. Ocean dredging has damaged coral reefs in Kenya, the Persian Gulf, and Florida. Sand mining is destroying marine habitats and muddying the water with sandy plumes that can affect aquatic life far from mining sites. Fishermen in Malaysia and Cambodia have lost their livelihood due to dredging. In China, reclamation has destroyed coastal wetlands, destroyed fish and sandpipers' habitats, and increased water pollution. And then there is Singapore, the world leader in land reclamation. To create more space for its nearly 6 million inhabitants, the crowded city-state has expanded its territory by an additional 50 square miles of land, consisting of imported sand over the past 40 years. The collateral damage to the environment was so great that neighboring Indonesia, Malaysia, Vietnam, and Cambodia have restricted sand exports to Singapore. In total, according to a Dutch research group since 1985, people have added 5,237 square miles of artificial land to the coast of the world an area approximately equal to the territory of Jamaica. Most of it created from a gigantic amount of sand. Mining sand for use in concrete and other building materials is even more damaging. Sand for construction is most often mined from rivers. Grain is easily lifted with suction pumps or even buckets and transported in boats. But the deepening of the riverbed can destroy the habitat of benthic organisms. Whipped up sediments cloud the water, suffocate fish, and block the sunlight that supports underwater vegetation. Let's look at just one river. The Mekong Delta in Vietnam is the source of half of the country's food and most of the rice that the rest of Southeast Asia consumes. 20 million people live in this area. River sand mining is contributing to the slow disappearance of the Mekong Delta. Every day, an area equivalent to one and a half football fields goes under the waters of the sea since people deprive the delta of its sand. To make matters worse, dredging on the Mekong and other waterways in Cambodia and Laos is causing riverbanks to collapse and fields and even houses to slide down. Farmers in Myanmar say the same thing happens along the Irrawaddy River. The removal of sand has changed the direction of the flow of water in the rivers of Sri Lanka, meaning that ocean water is directed inland and brings saltwater crocodiles with it. The sand world is not regulated, so when sand is extracted from sensitive areas, it damages biodiversity and poses additional environmental risks that can turn into physical threats. In an April 2022 report by the United Nations Environment Program, UNEP, scientists declared the existence of a sand crisis. Given our dependence, sand must be recognized as a strategic resource, and its extraction and use must be rethought, the document says. Meanwhile, urbanization in the world is growing rapidly. If urgent measures are not taken soon, construction may have to be stopped due to a lack of sand.